All right, so we are here with Jim Gareffi. Yes. Is that how you pronounce Thank it? You. Yeah, yes. Good. And Anne Boucher. Anne and I are both real estate agents, and we're meeting with Jim. I'm the health agent for the Board of Health. Yes, he's the health agent, and you were you're kind enough to meet with us because we have a very, I wouldn't say exciting. <laughs> no. We have a change, right. we have a change. In, in Stowe that we want to make sure that everybody's aware of and that we handle everything the way we should and correctly. Yeah. Now, when we understand at the health department that it's complex mm -hmm. um, and there's a lot of moving pieces yes. and there's a bunch of nuance, so to yes. the extent that we can help with that, mm -hmm. we'd like to. That's great. So do you want to tell us about the... Okay, I, the change. I, I I didn't bring the questions. Oh, oh no. Okay. So so there's so, so you you had us ask some questions and and um, I'll go through it. The, the town has had well regulations for a long yes. time. Um, when the state changed their model well regulations in 2015, uh, the board here adopted them. Mm -hmm. And since then, it's been about 10 years. I think 2015. Um, you know, things have changed. Mm -hmm. um, probably the biggest thing is the kind of discovery all over the town of PFAS. PFAS. So, mm. so, so it's it's kind of forced the board to take a look at are our current regulations protected with the public health? Yes. Can so, you explain what PFAS is just to the person who you know doesn't exactly understand what that is? Sure. So PFAS is kind of the acronym used for a class of chemicals that are used for anything from uh, used for water resistant clothing, uh, coatings on food service products. Um, and a lot of industrial processes. Okay. Um, so it's, I always tell people, because I think it's interesting, is if you go to DEP's webpage uh, for PFAS, so if you Google DEP PFAS, mm -hmm. uh, a very general page comes up. It's, it's a great source of information, but one of the first images that you see is a microwave popcorn bag. Uh -huh. So oh, just kind of the, uh, it's a very ubiquitous chemical. Yeah, okay. And so, um, but it's a class of uh, organic compounds um, and there's lots of them. Okay, thank you. Yep. So the local well regulations govern private wells. Anyone who has a public water supply, and, and that's kind of a misnomer in town here because the town of Stowe doesn't have a water department, mm -hmm. but any water supply that serves more than 25 people for more than 60 days is considered by DEP a public water supply, okay. and they regulate those. Okay. They, re yeah, they set up the required testing, um, the, the frequencies, they have to have water operators. So what we're dealing with here is just private uh, wells. Okay. Yes. Um, so the change coming is now when someone, before someone sells their home, sells their home. they are required to have a well test. Correct. Okay. And so <clears throat> kind of the rationale behind that, water is a basic human need. Mm -hmm. uh, and with the discovery of the chemicals in town, uh, the board wanted to find a more systematic way to kind of inform people of mm -hmm. what might be in their well water. And, and there's never a good way to do this. I mean, mm -hmm. you've probably been in real estate long enough to have gone through the initial Title V inspection process. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so this is kind of akin to that. It's, mm -hmm. it's closing seemed to be the time where you... Get that, sure. information. Yeah. Right, get that information for the parties. Okay. Um, and so that's the board decided to do that so they could actually let people know who are buying and you know, having the houses and having the wells that uh, what's in the well. Okay. So the, the homeowner that is selling uh, needs to uh, get a well test done. And uh, we have some samples here of what this might look like. And it is not Chinese food. <laughs> that's right. It no is take. not that's Chinese. This not. is an example of what the testing will look like whoops so, so this is a selection of bottles from one of the local labs to, to kind of give you an idea of uh, the extent of the testing that gets done and it seems to be extensive so we got a lot here so this is a big change and jim is working on coming up well posting this on that's right so what we'd, we'd, we'd like to do is be able to um get a, a maybe a few labs to be because we can't recommend as public officials right but we understand it's hard sometimes a if you don't speak the language of water testing mm -hmm. to call a lab and say hey i need a water test because the first question that I, they'll ask you is for what uh, and so we want to be able to have labs that are familiar with what it is the Stowe Board of Health regulations are looking mm -hmm. for um, and so that you can get the appropriate bottles or at least get a price of what it's going to be. Uh, the water sampling will be done 
uh, as per the regulations by an approved sampler. It has to be an approved, approved person, right? And so, yeah. so right now, I'm the approved person. Mm -hmm. um, the board at their next meeting will likely uh, entertain uh, other individuals to be approved samplers. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that meeting is April 11th. Uh, I believe so. <laughs> well, in the current system, too, we have home inspectors that come out, and lots of times buyers will have their water tested. But what you're saying is that we will no, no longer have a, we would no longer be able to use that inspector to pull the water sample. No, we need to, we, we I mean, I, I, there are situations where I will come out, and I'm going to do one I leave here today, mm -hmm. where I'm going to pull the sample for somebody. I'm going to put it in a sealed envelope yep. mm -hmm. and essentially give them that with a custody tag on it so they can take it to the lab so the lab knows i drew the water sample got it so there's oh, the, interesting. so there's yeah. a kind of a chain of custody process there too okay. the, the goal is you know if, uh, whoever's buying the house uh, wants to make sure the water test was done by an uninterested party sure. of and, course and that's really what right uh, what you're, mm. yeah, trying to okay. make sure happens okay the, the other time the, this water test will be required is when somebody uh, renovates a house and, and adds bedrooms so if you're putting an in-law that's adding a bedroom if you're mm -hmm. adding bedrooms to the house Essentially, the idea of you're adding additional people potentially, board mm -hmm. and because there are still some people who don't realize they may have a well, they may think there's a water system, and so there's an opportunity again for that systematic education of uh, yeah. folks about the you know, the need and 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 the concern you should have, uh, knowing what may be in the water. Okay, and <clears throat> do you know what the estimate of the cost will be? It's probably between. An initial sample. So I did kind of a little talk to that. Um, the cost is it, it's it'll be a function of a number of things. What the, there'll be an initial test. So this represent represents the initial. Mm -hmm. um, if you have uh, an exceedance uh, in the initial, so one of the things that the town requests is that you test for gross alpha, which is uh, a kind of a ge generic measurement of the radioactivity in the water. Okay. Um, the two con two radioactivity or radioactive elements that are concerned about is radium and uranium. So if the, and, and according to the regs, if the gross alpha comes back over five, 15 picocuries. So again, I don't want to get too deep in that, but that's a lab standard. There's additional testing for radium and uranium after that. Okay. So there's that, and, and so there's that little nuance. So you send this in, I, I think it's probably, probably gonna be like 850 to $900 for the initial testing. If you need to do the additional radiation, you know, radioactive materials, it's not another 350. Wow. Just okay. so you get a sense of cost. The other thing that will determine ultimate cost of the water testing, if there's an exceedance of a standard, yeah. a mm -hmm. primary standard, so yeah. arsenic, radon, mm -hmm. uh, radium, uranium, VOCs, PFAS, treatment systems will need to be installed. Um, and, and again, they need to be whole house systems in point of entry. Prior to the sale. Yes, yeah, so, because so that's on the seller that they will have to install the system. Get that done. And then okay. there needs to be testing afterwards for that parameter. So let's Correct. say you exceeded the arsenic, the system goes in, you need to retest right. the arsenic. And then a notice on the deed that essentially states, we, we've tested the water, there was an exceedance, there's treatment on it, now meets the standard. Again, that lets anyone buying the house kind of on, you know, in perpetuity know that the treatment system's there and it needs to be maintained for safe water. Mm -hmm. So how long do you feel like that will take in terms of from the first initial test, say you find something, then um, you have to go back for another test. Right. And then you realize you need to put a system in. So I kind of jotted out talking to the lab, mm -hmm. the initial test about three weeks. Okay. So what'll happen is probably about two and a half weeks in, we'll get the results of the gross alpha. Mm -hmm. um, the rest of the stuff should be done by then. Uh, actually, no, the PFAS is probably the, the three weeks too. If we get that call from the lab, we're taking this much water because we don't want to have to go back and resample. So they'll have that water in the lab. So if the gross alpha exceeds, oh. they can take that sample and send it on for the additional testing. So you don't need to go back to I test. do know. No, that's why oh, we're taking okay. that much water. That's yeah, great. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, that works out best. What'll happen is whoever the owner is or whoever we're working for, we'll send them an email saying, hey, we've got the gross alpha readings back. It's exceeding the 15. We need to do the further testing. And we'll ask for permission because it's another $350. We'll make sure we've got permission to do that. And then we can just tell the lab, you know, go ahead and run the rest of it. Yeah. So, you know, five weeks maybe by the time you're done for the initial, if there's an exceedance with the gross alpha. Okay. Um, 
if there's an exceedance on one of these, then it's a matter of talking to a treatment company. I don't know how long it takes to install right. any one of those. You know, our, I, each one of the systems is a little distant. I'm not an expert on the systems. Mm -hmm. um, but then you do the resampling. And if it was just arsenic, it's pretty quick. If it's back to the radium, it's a couple, three weeks. PFAS would be the same thing. So okay. those are the ones that kind of take the, the longer period of time. So that's kind of in a nutshell, the time right. frames. Okay. Um, so I was telling people it's... If, if you had an exceedance, you probably need two months, maybe, by the time. Okay, two months. And how long is it good for? So say a, someone Depends. wants to sell, but they're going to get all this taken care of, you know, six months prior or a year prior. Can they do that, or is it sure. something that needs to be immediate for when? So the board sell? says the results will be good for two years. Two years, okay. So if you took it today, sales within the, the next two years, Perfect. a piss day would... They, kind of like a septic system yes, as well. Title yeah, I mean, it, right. some towns have a year. Yeah. That seemed kind of short, particularly, you know, the only thing I think I would be concerned about in intervening years, maybe call for them, but the, the, all the chemistry, unless something happens, a spill or a mm -hmm. discovery of something, but okay. yeah, I wouldn't expect that things should change that much. Okay. okay. So that's Great. why the two years. Okay, so uh, my concern for the, for the residents mm -hmm. is... Number one, cost. Yes. Um, two, time frame. Mm -hmm. If someone needs to sell, correct. Um, this could, immediately like could if potentially it was hold up the the sale of the house. However, sometimes uh, what happens is if if something needs to be finished and and the house changes hands, you with the understanding that the system will be fixed or completed, installed. and yeah, some and, type of hold back of the. Of money. of money yeah yeah so the other the other concern is for the board of health um i am looking around here Anna and i spend a lot of time in here <laughs> and uh, they are inundated with work yep. and this is adding an additional <laughs> tell me about it crisis yeah really um i don't think we're crisis yet but there's the potential what, what happens is and you know you never get work in a nice, easy, regular pace. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants once. that sample today. That's right. Right. So that's right. Yeah. So, what are some of the things that that we as residents can do to streamline this? So, part of that is you know the, the board gave you those two years so that if you want to take it a little bit earlier, I know mm -hmm. nobody wants to spend the money until mm -hmm. they have to, but mm -hmm. you can take it a little bit earlier, knowing that you've got the two years. The mm -hmm. sample's good for two years. That gives you some time for planning. Gives you some time to know what it is you might have to do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you need a treatment or whatnot. Okay. Um, the board hopefully will get additional people who will be samplers, so that way they have a choice of people who can come. Will there be some type of training so they could do that? So, so we'll have. I understand. We have a, a sheet that's kind of um, uh, practices, best practices for samplers. Mm -hmm. So um, you know. Somebody can read that and make sure, you know, most sample, there's nuances about each one of these that to test. The coliform, obviously, you don't get your fingers in it. Right. Um, the PFAS, you just need to try to minimize the synthetic clothing you have or gloves. Yeah, I heard you couldn't even have like a fleece. That's why I've got my cotton sweater. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, things like VOCs and radon, you want to make sure the samples are taken where the, there's no bubbles in it. So that, right. You know, so there's just those. That. Yes. <laughs> there's just those. And, and, that's, that's, and, and then. So it's good if you're trained. That's, that's right, that, and that's that. what, and that's so that's what yeah, the board standard is. Yeah, you clearly make. look at all this. Yeah. That's right, because if you take the samples wrong, uh, let's say you take your PFAS wrong and you get a, an exceedance, we don't know if that's actually because there's an exceedance or I the had, tester, or, you know, I was yeah. eating off of uh, ready to eat, you know, paper plates that are all stain resistant I coated. I, okay. I mean, it's, I mean, it's uh, that's a ridiculous example, but mm -hmm. it's if you haven't thought about it and didn't put gloves on, that, that may be one of those things that. Yeah. So, again to get the cheapest set of results so that you're not doing, you want to make sure you've, you've taken it. Yeah, right, taken it as right. the best you can mm -hmm. originally, so. Okay. Okay, so um, here we go. This here is, we go. This is effective July 1st. For transfers, correct. So what we hope to do is uh, build out a Board of Health webpage so that we can have the regulations there so you'll see what the list of requirements are. Um, the best the practice, the best practices for uh, samplers, so in individuals who want to be samplers can see what that is. And, and the Town of Harvard has a nice little kind of a two-pager that kind of goes through the steps. We'd like to adapt that so that it'll be on the website for folks here in town. Uh, and then links to DEP and EPA's website. So if you have questions about the parameters them, themselves, you can actually That's take great. a look. That's yeah. great. Thank you. It will also be in the, the STO Independent, the details. And 
uh, this very informative video. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> that they can refer back to. <laughs> That's right. Well, now, and, and again, you know, I, I'm sure you're all, people say I wouldn't, not enough communication. It's like, I don't always know how to communicate to people. So having multiple ways of doing That's that. That's right. I and the website, great. the town mm -hmm. website. Right. And they can always call us. I'm, okay. We're happy to answer questions about the process. Uh, okay. What is your cell phone? Uh, no. I'm kidding. <laughs> try though <laughs> it's very frustrating because you it's worse than the office room. I, the office room I, I can pick up I, from my cell phone yeah i get it phone, you're doing on. the best that you can <laughs> yeah, and i right. appreciate your meeting with us sure. and you know this is going to be a, this is a big change for everyone sure. and we will try to do our best yeah. to um get this done in a timely manner for the safety of it's a benefit to the buyers so well you know, i think so it's, you have to look at it on both sides that, that's right i mean and and it's unfortunate that somebody has to pay for this. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it's something that really needs to be done. And, and that model that DEP picked seemed mm -hmm. to be, seems to have worked. Right. Uh, that you seem to get that information out. It doesn't pick up all the situations, mm -hmm. septic system wise, but it's a good first pass. Right. Okay. Well, thank you for meeting with us. You're welcome. Do you have any other no, questions? No, that was very helpful. It. Okay. Thank you, Jim. We'll get more information and build out the site. Sounds good. Thank you. Great, thanks.